Hello everyone. In this video, I will explain the basic architecture of Kubernetes in simple and easy way. Kubernetes is a very powerful tool used to run and manage containers, but it can feel confusing when you first read the documentation. A lot of people get confused because the explanations are full of technical words and complicated steps. So today we will break everything down step by step. I will show you the two main types of nodes in Kubernetes, master node and worker nodes. We will see what each one does inside Kubernetes cluster. We will also understand how Kubernetes is self-healing, automated and reduces your manual work. Once you understand the basics, you will see how helpful and smart Kubernetes really is. Let's start with very basic setup. One Kubernetes node and two application parts running on it. Now, one of the main parts of Kubernetes architecture is worker node. These are the servers that actually run your applications. Each node can have multiple parts and inside each part, one or more containers are running. But how does Kubernetes manage all of this? There are three important processes that must be installed on every node. These processes help schedule and manage the parts properly. The first and most important one is the container runtime. In this example, I am using container D. This is needed because your pod contain containers and those containers need a runtime to actually run on the node. So just remember, every Kubernetes nodes must have a container runtime installed on your apps. The next important process that runs on every Kubernetes node is called kubelet. While the container runtime is used to run containers, kubelet is a core Kubernetes process that talks directly to the Kubernetes control plane. It is responsible for checking what needs to run on the node and making sure it actually happens. Just think like this. The kubelet receives instructions like which pod to run, how many containers and what resources are needed and then work with the container runtime to start those parts on the node. It also helps assign the necessary system resources like CPU, memory and storage for each container running inside the pod. In a real Kubernetes cluster, you usually don't have just one node. You might have dozens or even hundreds of worker nodes that every one of them needs to have both the container runtime and kubelet running to do its job properly. Let's understand how communication happens between different parts of Kubernetes cluster. In Kubernetes, communication between different components like application pod and database is handled using a concept called services. A service acts like load balancer. It catches any request that meant for specific applications or pod. For example, a database pod forwards that request to the appropriate pod, but what exactly handles the forwarding at a system level? Kubeproxy. Kubeproxy is a process that runs on every worker node in the Kubernetes cluster. It contains intelligent logic that ensures that traffic is routed efficiently and with low overhead. For example, if application pod makes a request to the database, kubeproxy does not randomly pick any replica of the database to handle that request. Instead, it checks is this database replica running on the same node. If yes, it forwards the request locally to the replica on the same node. This avoids sending across the network unnecessarily, it improves the performance. Now on every Kubernetes worker node, three things must be installed, kubelet, kubeproxy and container D. So now the question is, how do you interact with the cluster? Do you decide which node runs your application or database part? What happens when a part crashes? Or when you had a new server, I mean new worker node, how does it automatically join the cluster? The answer is, all this is handled by Kubernetes master nodes, also called control plane. What does control plane do? The control plane is the brain of your Kubernetes cluster. It is responsible for deciding which nodes gets which part, monitoring parts, and restarting if they fail, or rescheduling failed parts, automatically handling new parts when they are added to the cluster. Now you don't have to manually manage all these things. The master node does this for you. Now let's talk about uh, the brain of your Kubernetes cluster, the master node or control plane. All the managing processes of Kubernetes cluster are handled by master nodes. These master nodes runs completely different set of services compared to the worker nodes. And there are four key processes that runs on every master node to control the cluster state and manage the worker nodes. The first and most important component is API server. 
whenever you as a user or developer wants to deploy a new application or makes any changes to the cluster you send that request to the api server you can use a command line tool kubectl or a web ui like kubernetes dashboard or even you can interact with kubernetes api directly the api server acts as a gateway to the cluster it is an entry point for all the communication whether you are creating pods services deployments or even just checking the health of your cluster it also acts as a gateway for authentication and authorization meaning it checks whether your request is allowed so if you want to deploy an app or if you want to create a new service or if you um, want to query the status of your pods it all starts with api server it validates the request and then passes it on the internal services for execution this single entry point is great for security and cluster consistency now comes the scheduler let's say you send a request to the api server to start a new pod once the request is validated it's handed over to the scheduler the scheduler decides which worker node should run this new pod but it does not make any decision randomly instead the scheduler follows a smart process that looks as it looks for the resource requirements for your pod like how much cpu or memory it needs and then checks all the available worker nodes to see which one can best handle the workload if a node has more pre resource or it is least busy the scheduler chooses that node the scheduler only makes the decision on where to run the pod the actual process of starting the pod on that node is done by kubelet which is running on the selected worker node the next important component we will look at is the controller manager the one that keeps an eye on the whole cluster state and making sure everything is running as expected let's say a pod dies on one of the worker node maybe due to crash or maybe due to node failure there has to be mechanism to detect this change right that's exactly what the controller manager does it constantly watches the actual state and compares it with the desired state so when it notices that a pod has died the controller manager immediately takes an action it triggers a request to the scheduler to reschedule that dead pod and just like before the scheduler analyzes available resource for all the worker nodes picks the most suitable one and then instruct the kubelet on that node to restart the pod so the entire self filling mechanism starts with controller manager noticing that something went wrong the final and perhaps the most critical uh, master process is etcd it's a highly consistent key value store that stores the entire cluster state every time something happens in the cluster like a new pod getting scheduled or a pod crashing or even a node going offline that configuration gets updated in etcd and why this is important because all the master processes like api server scheduler and controller manager rely on etcd to know what's happening in cluster the scheduler checks etcd to know which nodes have how many resources available the controller manager uses etcd to detect changes like pod going offline the api server queries etcd to return to the latest cluster state when a user makes a request so etcd basically holds the truth about your kubernetes cluster one important thing is that etcd does not store your actual application data so if you are running a database inside a cluster the actual records or tables are stored somewhere else usually on a persistent volume etcd only stores kubernetes specific info like pod definitions node states service discovery details configuration changes it's like a database for cluster itself not for your applications now that to understand how critically the master components are especially etcd what happens if a master node goes down in a real world kubernetes deployment you will usually have multiple master nodes for high availability each master runs its own set of processes the api server is load balanced and std state forms a distributed system across all masters this makes sure that even if one master fails the other can keep the cluster running without downtime the beauty of kubernetes is you can uh, scale your cluster very easily thanks for watching it if you found this video useful like it 
share it and don't forget to subscribe my channel